Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Solgan Star Saga series. This ongoing Norse Norwegian playthrough, as this may be the last episode to feature Estrid the Great, who is currently 64 years old, but her health is doing poor. But when will she pass away? Only she will know. As you can see that perk of it's what it'll do. So she'll know when her time uh, will be coming. That she will leave this surf and and she'll uh, uh, either end up in Valhalla or in hell. And that's hell with one L. Keep that well in mind. Now, it's likely the latter because... Adulterer, murderer, tyrant, although tyrant's not a vain trade, it's just, she's been doing a lot of tyranny lately. I mean, look at the tyrant, it's, it's 15. So she's been doing uh, plenty of tyranny related things, but that's mostly due to fabricating hooks rather than doing something that is, you know, against the traditions or law breaking, one would think. But there's still much more work to be done before she will leave this cruel, cold world. And that is to... we will finally invest our money because we have so much gold that we have no idea what to do with that we should explore the seas west of Greenland. Sailors blown off course while traveling the North Atlantic have reported sighting lands to the west of Greenland full of trees and hills. Should I take the risk of funding a great expedition to discover the truth behind these purported claims and see what lies beyond Greenland? So, if successful, we will earn prestige, which <laughs> i like to be a living legend before I would finally go. So you will earn prestige. Greenland's networks will also increase significantly. New lands will be discovered that unlock further decisions and opportunities for anyone involved in a colonization of Greenland. It'll be three months to set up this expedition. That will gather people and supplies to prepare, and I'll ask a courtier to lead a great expedition or hire a randomly spawned leader instead for 50 gold. So you cannot have an ongoing normal expedition, only one great expedition. Expedition can be active globally at a time. Of course, the cost of this is reduced if you are either of North or Celtic heritage. Or is that Gaelic, to be more precise? Now, these historical context as a reminder for you people. The two uh, Finland, uh, Vinland sagas written in the 13th century are our main accounts of the Norse voyages to the Americas due to their fantastic, fantastical contradictory details they are not reliable sources scholars question if the Norse were even in Americas until the Anze uh, uh, Meadows, Meadows an archaeological site in Newfoundland was discovered in 1960 Leif Erikson a Christian convert and son of Greenland's discoverer Eric the Red is often seen as the first Norse explorer to properly set foot on the Americas. But the sagas differ on the nature of his voyages, assuming these sagas have any agreed truth to them. I'm allowed to do this because of my level of fame is illustrious, and I am the Queen, the Drottning of Norway. So we will make history. This is a way to start the episode, is to explore the seas west of Greenland. A journey a thousand miles begins with one step, or in this case, one decision. I have decided to sponsor a great expedition to the Western Seas to see where there is any truth to these stories, that there are even more lands out there beyond Greenland. The first thing I need to do is select someone capable and adventurous to lead this expedition. Some of my courtiers have expressed interest in leading this expedition. I certainly appreciate their desire for adventure. Additionally, a local by the name of Svanhild has heard of my 
plans and has offered her services to me. I have it on good word that she has some experience traveling across many lands, so she could be an option for the expedition's leader too. Here are the other options. One of my fighters, who was a peasant leader, a bit homely, also known torturer. Not notable enough. I know this man, Ali the Fearless. I don't know if you pronounce it like Ali, even though that is a Islamic name. Or, I mean, you gotta figure out the accent, Mike, there. I mean, heck, my name's Astrid, so it could be Ali. Ali, Ali, or the Fearless One. Who's brave, wrathful, ambitious, so he sounds like he's more suited to being an explorer. Now, what about her? Since they say she has some experience. She may be deceitful, patient, zealous, brilliant, strategist. Listen, you're good for one thing, but someone with a wide range of skills could prove much more useful for somebody of uh, qualities. So, <laughs> her motto, Odin's Frenzies guides us. Okay, I'll take her. Which means, of course, I have to pay the funds to her. So, Svanhild will be selected to lead this expedition. Because I only want somebody with various uh, good skills, because that may help her out as an explorer. Our first female explorer. We know David, who has long since passed, was the one discovered Norway. What will Svanhild do? This one hit, this one hit, uh, discovered. Fitz, it's one of it, because I'm trying to figure out the pronunciation. Anyways, following the discovery of Greenland by David, there is now talk of about lands that lie even further west. Based on reports from sailors blown off course, however, Greenland is already a great distance from the rest of the world. So few would want to take a risk and travel that far across the sea, until now. News is traveling across the northern seas about an expedition, sponsored by Drug yesterday, to explore the western seas if there is any lands beyond even ground. The expedition will be led by a certain adventurer by the name of Svanhild. Of Svanhild. It's the story. What most people are doubting is to not what is not whether anything could be found, or whether such lines that they exist will be worth set. Of course, there's only one way to find out. Is history about to be made? So, assuming this great expedition succeeds, the decision to explore the western seas of Greenland is permanently unavailable for other rulers in the Nordic Seas region, since we're the first ones to do it. Nobody's willing to spend their money on it, and nobody's got the fame to do so, so I will have that honor to fund this great expedition for you. It'll take a few months to prepare, and then they shall set sail to beyond. Now, in the meantime, locally, since I care about prestige, I'm going to go on a hunt and go out and feast. Sound the horn. Be hunting down here. Tunsford. You would think of a creature from myth, perhaps a god disguised in animal form. It was the largest heart I have ever seen. Even after the beast was wounded, the chase lasted half a day. It is still an opposing sight, lying there void. Oh, feel that. Um, is just as awestruck. I've never seen such a thing, my lady. Huh. I mean, I already have enough, you know, skulls and hides. But I'll say, its skull will make a fine crown. Just to keep the dread up to the max. Because that's what she would want. 
game of Mount Tower to lead Flames Finders prepared a hard and another game for the journey back. It's smarter if they've got this longer. The hunt so went very well. We face tonight. See who's here. Only the artist decline. It's the family. And yes, that includes my son and rival. My shield maiden daughters. Including the world's strongest woman, Thorun, who is to become the queen of Norway. Despite the fact that she's a murderer and all that. It says nothing about how she became murder, but she is now rivals with my run. Condensedly refused to fight Thorin uh, over Thorin's uh, parents' honor. So even if I pass away, you must finish the job for me, Thorin, but I think the help will take her. And we shall both rejoice. If I'm alive by then. But I would love to challenge her to a duel again. And put her out of her misery once I wound her. Because she is my nemesis. Not just a rival. A nemesis. Which is a special relation indicating utter and mutual contempt and hatred. It is a stronger special relation than a rival. A character can only have one nemesis. After the feast, I'll deal with her. And of course, spend more money on those structures. My dear husband, Charles, he's been working hard to ensure that everything about the feast goes smoothly. The food arrives on time. I guess they're all seated in the right place. Everyone seems content. Now Charles is beside me at the great table. Everything is ready. I squeeze his hand and smile at him before rising to the start of celebrations. But what I would have done about it. Keep the vassals happy. And they'll be willing to vote for Thorin. Despite her flaws. Bjorn's no longer my bodyguard. You were one of the great men. If I want to, I can appoint him to be expedition leader, but... Ah, okay. So, you can actually appoint any courtier here, regardless of gender, to be an explorer. That's good to know. I didn't know that until I was just click on it, because I was about to send Sigvaldi to the Varangian Guard. Because, <laughs> skill-wise, he needs to improve. Because I believe all of my family members, any dynasty members, can be sent to the guard. So, plus, you weren't attending the feast, so you're off to there. Ah, yes, I sent him there as well, even though he lives in another area. Oh, and speaking of Foley, on this attendant to Foley, he carelessly reveals all manner of things, distracted by trying to get one last drop from his tanker. He's oblivious, how carefully I'm paying attention. Once he realizes, he starts getting up. I'm only rambling. It's not true, anyways. Any of it. Ooh, you got a lover? Who is it? Who's the lucky one? Hmm. During his service the Ranging Guard, he met a, a Greek woman that he likes in particular. She turned 16 two months ago. 
Guess they became lovers pretty quickly. I don't know what you see in that woman. But uh, if I were you, um... Oh, it's kind of too far away to interact, so it doesn't matter much. Got it. Now let's build the war camps. Anybody that inherits my domain, they'll all have benefits. It'll be a while before it turns to a fortified travel hold. Check the living members. Who is not of the Varangian Guard yet? Of course, it has to be not landed. My nephew of Giltland. If only, right? Check again. Nah, they'll manage. Who in the right mind wants to conquer that island? Oh yes, I just thought of something. I vote of Boneless nearly controls all of Scotland. But he is not going to be around for long. So, trial by combat it is. He doesn't have much in him anymore. So I'm willing to fight to the death for him. He doesn't want anything else. He wants death. And I'll give him death. And I'll fight you too. Awaiting a response regarding another matter. Maybe Thorin could deal with you. Oh, speaking of Thorin. Reminds me. Oh, yeah, we need a raw architect so we could have buildings built faster. Aptitude is good, despite the fact I have someone better, but Thorin could take my place in some duels. If anybody tries to challenge me, that is. And you also be my bodyguard. Oh, just to sign them all. You know you can afford them. Man, that man's good at everything. Feels like I'm tripling his pay. Despite our differences, son. No 
don't need this because there's no reason to have the control group because there hasn't been any incidents lately that requires it as such. If I only have some fool, some other rival, I would appoint a jester. Consider yourself as an unlucky bastard. Today is the day. The great expedition I sponsor is about to set sail for the western seas to see if there are more lands beyond Greenland. So I think that my chosen leader for this expedition says that she is confident in the crew, assuring me that she will do her utmost to make note of any new lands she discovers. Particularly, we might be able to settle such lands in the future. We eagerly, we eagerly await your turn. So, she will gain the trait of ex adventuring the Western Seas, and she will explore the Western Seas for at least a year, and possibly a little longer. And it creates a expedition to West activity in New Dallas. Now, I arrive at the designated spot near and in good time and find Tony Ivar already is already waiting for me, along with the small entourage of witnesses. Whatever else may be, Ivar is fit to fight and willing to risk meeting me man to woman. The formalities are brief, we all know why we are here. We are long past the point of talking. Weapons are handed out and our retinues retreat to observe from a safe distance. May the best woman or man win. If I die, I won't be ashamed. No. I've been wanting to pass away for some time, but if I do survive, well, it's Odin's will. If I am to die, it is his will. If I survive, it is his will, no matter what. Trial by combat begins. For brief few moments, Ivar and I pace in lazy half circles, each watching for an opening. I heft my sword, ready to defend myself, while he clutches his Zalpan Adoni's dagger firmly to him. Only one of us is walking away from here today, and I intend it to be me. With a sudden twitch, our bow begins. Ivar's retort is carefully calculated, waiting from precisely the right point of flies with several quick slashes of his dagger. I'll show you how I have the sword. The confident attack with skill and poise I make a series of well placed strikes. My sword flows around Ivar like water. Each strike chaining fluidly onto the next. A series of perfectly timed strikes. Spotting an opportunity, Ivar lunges forwards and headbutts me hard in the face. I reel backwards, wrong footed. My form is good with only small ears. Ivar's stance is failing. My opponent's guard is fierce, and I feel far from victory. Gained a dual handicap for both of us because of that headbutt move. This will work. Hills, fans, mountains, this is all my domain. Master of Terrain. My expert knowledge of the local terrain stands in good stead. This will make a high chance of success. Low risk of injury. The rocky landscape we fight in is hazardous. Either of us could trip and fall to our death, and a violent shove here is as dangerous as a sword point. I take great delight in demonstrating this to Ivar time and again. Ivar's dagger moves into a lazy defensive position. He begins shouting me down, his tone would one not use for misbehaving a surf non drunkly My form is excellent, but with little chance for mistake. Ivar's stance is a disaster. I have my opponent on the back foot, but I still need to consolidate my victory. And I gain more of a dual handicap again. Is that the best you got? You can't even hit me. I'll play defensively for the time I'll allow the time so I stay fresh. 
taking my time, staying calm, mixing relentless purring with infuriating dodges, I exactly erode my opponent's energy. While it's a while before a suitable gap opens in his guard, when it, when it does, this is all I need. With a single powerful cleave from my sword, I tear through his belly into his stomach. Gore, bile, and my opponent's last meal flood out. Showering my lower half, he lets out an ear splitting scream. It is perhaps a kindness when I end his suffering early. Goodbye, Conagar Ivar, son of Ragnar. He was the last living son of Ragnar. I had the honor to put an end to it. Resting easy back in it, I was like, called to my success. My sword lay across my lap. His blood still kicks into fresh grooves and not just along the weapon's pommel. Reminded me of the man's last moments. Yesterday, we put our quarrel before the gods, and the gods answer wisely. Just as is said. You're next. Of course. Why would you honor that doxa yield this of a position according to me? My coat here, this thing is livid. We've been certain that honor would befall him and no one else. Come off it. Get over yourself. If you can get it up to seven, which will. That's based on that baseline. Offer guardianship acceptance for vassals. Increase the prisonment chance. And a little more higher vassal opinion. Again, it's impossible to make it up to level 10 of the grandeur when you're a tribal court. But this is as good as it can get. But I would love to have 8, but that seems like a, a dream at this point. So I dealed once. Now it's time to do with my nemesis. Put her out of her misery too. A few brief moments, uh, and the Galmarpa and I pace in lazy half circles, each watching for an opening. I heft my sword, ready to defend myself, while she clutches her sword from the right to hand. This fight may be only till first blood, but at least needs my nerves. With a sudden twitch, our bout begins. Despite an opportunity, Marva lunges forward and headbutts me in the face. Real backwards, wrong footed. Why does this always happen to me? Hmm. Next round's a high, medium, but this. I have that option now because I'm a Viking. Me thinks I need to make an example of you. The butchery. I'll make a show of my cruel skills as a raider. I will gain 14 dread up to the max. I can't count how many people I've run through with my sword. Maybe Martha will be next. Maybe not. But my reign of savage blows must have worried. I have worried about it. Well, this is utterly outmatched. Martha hurls herself at me bodily, forcing me backwards all desperation of doom. My form is good with only small errors. Her stance is passable. I've yet to open up my opponent's guard at all. I see no way yet to claim victory. Let me show you how a professional fights, because I'm a shield maiden. Hard grit, bringing my experience to bear, I lay down a battery of determined attacks. To practice these, I evade a strike from Martha, stepping into the blow, bringing my sword up for a powerful cleave, before darting back out to a safe distance. Marpa stays stock still, seeming hopefully I'll just throw down my sword. My form is excellent, little chance of mistake. Her stance is failing. My opponent is still falling off my blows well, but she seems close to faltering. Go for strict guard. Better women than you have died trying to break my guard. I'll focus entirely on fending her off. My sword is a better protector than any shield. Preparing, countering, guarding against her every move. Wherever she moves the sword, my sword is there. 
waiting. Dare to be forgiving scum! Screams my opponent, whirling her sword furiously at, around, and near me. My form is excellent, little chance for mistake, and her stance is a disaster. I've yet to open up my opponent's guard at all, so no one yet to claim victory. This has got to be some death round at this point. I'm the fastest blade in Norway, because I'm a blade master. So, blade dance. A series of flashy expert moves to ensure my dueling prowess will be talked about for years. High chance of success. I whirl my sword with a deadly flourish, breathing a song of pain across my opponent with every blow. There's an art to true combat. I am nothing if not artistic. Only when Marfa's been near stiff, I do deliver the final blow. The summary of one smoothly powerful cleave sends the woman's sword flying. I prepare myself mentally and physically to run her through, pausing perfectly the second my opponent yields. I am victorious. Aggravated wound. That'll take care of her. I know it doesn't say near death, but give or take. Hopefully in the next year, she'll pass on. Anybody else? Okay, good. These should be my last few duels. There's nothing else to spend my money on, but in Next year, we will hold that grand sacrifice, and it's highly likely we'll go raiding again for more loot and more prestige, which hopefully we will find time for that. Where's me? Here I am. Don't put me on anyone's command anymore. Plus, we're trying to develop the capital. Inspired work. Nikolaus. My friend! Uh, Nikolaus approaches me, tied to clutching a manuscript. I wrote a work of fiction after reading the literature that is popular in your court. Please accept the honor of being the first person to read my words. I accept the manuscript and glance at some of the lines. Every description of the protagonist uh, mentions him having big, beautiful absor orbs. Nicholas brings a focus at even in appropriate situations. You were inspired once, as you did forge something for me. My word, this is incredible. You must write more. Wait, Thorun, you're not Viking yet, are you? No? Hm, it's not humorous, it's true, so says her. We know Aslog is Viking, but now it's Thorun's turn to raid. Because she's a reaver too. Although she's not great as a commander, but she's the best fighter. Ever since I killed Ivar the Boneless, the realm is split. Sons of Ivar now runs many different areas there. So the lands are divided. You are to raid in Paris.
and it appears they've destroyed the title of Italy after the disillusioned faction, I assume, because when you see smaller entities like this, then you know who to blame. Amazingly, those Saldanids are still there. Anyways. I hear the footsteps of someone approaching me uh, from behind and turn around and see Nikolaus looking all kinds of excited. My friend, he eagerly calls out to me as he closes the disc rooms. It's done! The next part of my story. A manuscript is forced in my hands before I can say anything. Courtesy glance reveals more rewrites and continuations of other manuscripts. It's clear that Nikolaus found a topic he wants to write about. If you're you're going to stagnate if you only write the same thing, so there's a 33% chance of either he becomes inspired to write a masterpiece. Or he tries out new things, which he stops showing me right while trying new things. Or feels hurt by my lack of support. We shall see. I wish I could get her out of prison, but I guess that chance is lost. It's about time to hold the court. My friend Vava Mokoka comes forward, apprehensively escorted by her husband, Kittlemunder, who seems in bad temper. He sprouts up. My lady, here's Sir Andor, is trying to seduce my wife in front of Odin. He has never liked it. It must be him. No, Koga is clearly embarrassed to have aired this so publicly, and can barely bring herself to meet my eyes. I will not tolerate adulterers in my court. That's hypocritical, one would think about her. <laughs> no, no prison. My friend, you said Miko stands before me, a concerned expression on his face. My lady, I come on behalf of my sister, Asta. She's been nobly imprisoned by from Mokoro of Lofte for trivial and preposterous reasons. My heart bleeds for the miserable conditions to my poor sister's door. Please show her mercy in order to be released. Get a weak hook on him. I believe I've already done that to him. Regarding forcing the vote, but let us to be free. Harboring an exile. A new arrival to my court today is one, an envoy of my friend. Uh, of Soviet. Soviet's gotta be poor, right? Yeah. Yes. Drot Ning asked It's kind of my attention to my liege that you are harboring an individual of particular interest. It has a legitimate claim. Okay, Dawson. Okay. Request and demands a return to certain subject of his. I send out of the room whilst my council celebrates. What shall we do? Hmm. Try to trick him to taking a so instead, the deception will be discovered upon a return to him. Yes, 85% chance I'll successfully convince him, and it will likely be furious if he finds out. <laughs> It'll add intrigue lifestyle. 50% chance that does not believe in freeze, fleas, it will bring more to my failed plot to him. So I'll disguise my brother-in-law and send him instead. Again, she's an envoy.
Successfully deceived. <laughs> Nicholas has a book inspiration. Well, what do you know? He wants to write about hunting. Sure. We're about to go raiding for more loot anyway. I'm glad that little thing that he gained some inspiration. Wants to write about hunting instead of some big beautiful thing. My dear friend, I suppose you thought that was terribly clever. Disguising this is. Yes, I got I'm trusting in the ignorance of my envoy to not realize it. I do hope that you weren't too fond of this, though. If it is a crime, it's uh, good to impersonate a noble, so he was put to death. You and I are now enemies. Damn you to hell. I doubt, because we're still friends. Well, <laughs> he, he just died. Now the new ruler. Hold the gear. Hold the gear. Doing fine. There's more stewardship. My goodness. All these things. A marble scepter of what? Weapon, masterwork armor. So he's more into pillaging. Well, we're more into venturing. Time for you to be on the Viking, Thorin. Catch your grandson. What? You got no money? What would I do for a hook on him? He's for keeps until you pay up. Fire thing. It behooves a Jotnig to spend time at sea. With a salt air in her face and a fine vessel beneath her feet, today sees my personal craft and a small escorting squadron out for drills. Practice and pleasure. A short voyage has been an exhilarating change from life at court when we spotted a distant plume of water followed by a small line of wine dark flesh rolling out of the waves. The greatest beast of all the deeps, a whale. What a grand quarry! Face a true leviathan of the deep. I'll lose all the stress because I'm brave. The prowess challenge is 71%. Chance that I'll slaughter whale haul at the shore, which will gain me 300 gold. 29% chance the beast escapes me, wounds me, and all that. Slaughter whale and haul at the shore. Great wealth to be had. Thorin's gonna inherit all that wealth whenever I pass.
you are doing excellent. Thorin is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Ah, yes. It's time. Fortified travel hold constructed. We improved all the buildings we have. Forty six days. The development level will reach nine. And perhaps I should take command. Give Thorne a break. But not yet. Oh, you won't accept? Agreed. Oh, blast it. Oh, here we go. There are ordinary adventurers and travelers who are often forgotten after their deaths, and there are those whose glory and fame will live on in future legends for centuries and centuries to come. Today there is no doubt that Sven is one such legendary explorer. She has returned to my territories with news about the seas and lands she explored in her great expedition to explore the seas west of Greenland. According to Sven there are three more lands to the west. She named them Hilliland, Markland, and Finland. Finland, the most fertile of these three lands, is also the most remote. There will be plenty of time in the future to further explore these lands. Who knows what else you might discover? What brave and inspiring explorers. So, we have discovered these three places. I gained 300 prestige for this. Wow. While the explorer has that trait, gains of a thousand prestige and a level of fame. And she will be known as the discoverer of Hilliland, Markland, and Finland. Which this character has led a great expedition to these seas west of Green, discovering three new lands which they named Hilliland, Markland, and Finland. Having accomplished such a glorious feat, they had earned a spot in the history books. So it's Take a drink. The brave adventurers found it. Stuart and our crew have returned from their expedition to explore the western seas, confirming rumors about the lands west of Greenland. According to reports, they discovered three new lands. The first land they passed through, which they named Hilliland, is dominated by flat stones. The second land, which they named Markland, is full of mighty forests and white sandy beaches. A third land, which they name uh, Vineland, is filled with grapes and fertile metals, which could be settled one day if it wasn't so far from Europe and lacking in other valuable resources. Perhaps some overly ambitious fool will attempt and likely fail to permanently settle this Vineland, but more sensible leaders might see value in exploring these lands, particularly Hilliland and Markland. 
to find local allies or goods to trade. Who knows what will happen in the next world of the North Atlantic. A remarkable feat, my sweet and my crew. So now, decisions and mechanics related to Hilo Land, Markland, and Vineland have been unlocked for rulers who are involved in the colonization agreement. Because it, because when it was discovered uh, during the uh, settlement phase, or after the successful conclusion of the colonization agreement, its viability starts off at 20. We'll tell you a little more about this as soon as we turn from the raids, knowing that money is going to be spent to go out on these expeditions. Who's the unlucky bastard? You are. You've been here for a while. I'm gonna sacrifice you. Development level 9. Alright, let me take over. Because I need to raid these castles, so that way the event of of fire and blood can pop up, which will give me a chance to to uh, we'll do all this. Okay, and also I got an idea since we have this amount of large amount of money that we'll be using and spending including bringing it all back home be back in a moment I do not fulfill the requirement not currently saying expedition Actually, I can, but still do not. It's because all these relevant characters are are there. Yeah, the okay, okay. I get it, I get it. Oh, well, then let's just keep it up. Fighting men, the splatter of red blood, the clashing of weapons everywhere. I scream and shout in my dream, unaware of my surroundings, of who is my friend and who is my enemy, swinging my sword uh, without regard, lost in my battle rage in the hellish terror that is battle. Die! Die! Yes. Look how close we are. In about roughly a year, we will get the next Dynasty Legacy that relates to Adventure. Yeah, we forced to cancel it because I decided to read the Lady Expedition. But don't worry, the sacrifice will be performed as well. Drunken Brawl. A tavern in Nidaros is usually a perfect place to forget about the troubles of the world, but tonight's an exception. As ill luck would have it, I'm just sitting one table over from there, and there uh, is my son and rival, Horikamutu. He has been a nuisance since we arrived. All it took is one more accidental spill of his spice went over my arm and something uh, was on her feet. Horikamutu's device has turned into two in a process of rather drunkenly squaring up. By the time I managed to hold myself to defeat the test. Psst. 
stand aside. Hold a counter is mine. Apparently, take a speed aside. This is between me and my son, alright? I'm gonna teach him a lesson. For a few brief moments, well, my son and I pace in laser half circles, each watching for an opening. I have my sword ready to defend myself while he clutches his axe firmly to hand. This fight may be able to first flood, but that does ease my nerves. The sudden twitch our bout begins. Horikers are counters with a fierce hail of quick slash almost cutting me down repeatedly. You don't compare. Let's go for the simple expert on slant. Just like he did a quick slashes, well then I'll do it back at him. Strike, parry, bust. I leap into action, launching a flurry of quick slashes, driving myself hard into his guard and against his guard. Wearing him down with each expertly time strike. Horror Kanuta's time in the Varangian Guard left him stoic, brutal, and deadly with, with an axe, delivering a powerful cleave after powerful cleave to my torso. My form is good of only small errors. His stance is incredible. My opponent's guard is fierce, and I feel far from victory. <sighs> he got veteran exercise. Huge health boost for him. Party. I'm a suffer blasphemer. I was trying to pray at home with myself before Odin. Odin is wise, and his wrath is on my side. I shout my devotion to the heavens. The Horikon might tremble in fear before my faith. You're a disgrace to the Sogginstall name, screams my opponent. Four of Lang's axe fiercely out from near me. My form is good of only smallers. He stands for me. I have yet to open up my opponent's guard on I see no way to claim victory. I'm the fastest blade in Nordman. Now, let's do a blade dance. In battle, I'm an artist. Each strike is a brush stroke. Every fallen foe or gout of blood splash paint as I brandish my sword, switching seamlessly between flourish and strike. I paint a picture of agony across my foe. He counters a fierce hail of quick so I was almost cutting me down repeatedly. Forms excellent little chance of mistake. Um, his stance is critical. I have yet to open up my opponent's guard at all, and I see no way yet to claim victory. I'll show you how I have this sword. Just a confident attack. This is a sudden death round, I believe. Have to win it. Confidence is half of any fight. I throw out foodly quick slashes of all the confidence of a seasoned expert. Does best to ward me off, but he's entirely on the defensive. This guard is only getting weaker and slobber of each blow. When the opportunity presents itself, I knock his axe flying with one powerful cleave. And like that, the bout is decided. I get my yield before I even enter my backswing. I am victorious, so that was a sudden death round. He's wounded, but armor took a bit of a beating from him. He may have served that guard well, but... You still cannot best me, even on my worst day. That'll teach you. Oh, my sister Gita, one of the greats. In her service, she killed three men, including Sigurd Snake in the Eye. The fearless one. Just... All right. <laughs> Book is finished. I hope the completed work overshadows my lack of knowledge in the subject. Please have a look. The manuscript uh, flushed with detailed illustrations and insights in the art of hunting 
and the beauty of the natural world. The cover is loud, displaying a repeating image of a majestic bird and not seated by the placement of agate incense. The motto of the Saga Star family, Triumph, Love, Prosperity, is written on a highly decorative song on the first page. Good for prowess, if needed. I'm impressed. Very fine lettering you got here. What the hell? Oh, they broke up because they're disconnected. That's why it's an independent entity, two of them. Which no doubt France will take it back. If need be. Keep going. Here it is. Now it'll take two years for it to reach the development level up to <clears throat> up to a hundred. And it'll reach to level ten of the development of our capital. And we can use this other thing. Prince Charles's mentor. What do you know? There's still plenty of loot left over. Go back to your position, Thorin. She hasn't become a Viking yet. We could send an expedition to the west now, but I'll notify that for future reference, as it'll be up there, but I just want all my men to return from the raid, so that way I can decide who I'm going to send someone out to the expedition to. But I think we may go home sooner rather than later. And you know, with the exploration of these lands west of Greenland, historically we did that a hundred years earlier as well. Or ninety years earlier. I want to be known as the heart of the family here. So I want these close family members to be a little more respected. I think you want to, may want to start fabricating for hooks again to force every single one of these people to vote for Thorin. Befriend them if you must. Aha! Castle in my realm. Since when? Oh. He... Name that essence. Is sickly. Well, might as well take advantage of that as long as we can. Makes a little difference. But it'll have to do. Let me take care of this.
I will only go after castles for a potential fire and blood event to pop up. It's almost time to go. It's not a castle. Prince Bishrick is nearby. Surrounded by them, in fact. Just two more, and then we'll get out of here. Last one, okay. Okay, that's all we did what we could. Now let's get out of here. Take him home. Once you arrive back here, we're going to send an expedition to the west, hold a grand sacrifice and everything. Because I need to be here. Here we go. Last time we got Wanderlust. Wanderlust. And, and again, I attend for this part of the series. Go for all of this. Next one is Gift Givers, which more likely to get trade events when raiding, which we haven't seen one, and you have to be a ruler. No, no, no. You have, you yourself, the character, that leads the raiding army. And when you land somewhere, you're more likely to get a little trade event when you raid. As in, it's like, oh no, don't raid us, we'll trade with you, we'll give you money. And, and, and when they give you the money, then, then you don't raid them for a period of time. It's kind of like a, a mini truce. It also costs less to send gifts, while the seduce success chance increases plus 15%, and you gain prestige for successful seduce schemes. The riskier seduction, the more prestige gained. Huh. That's something we might descent be doing often. Off they go. Eight hundred and fourteen gold and prestige. Now, two things. 66 years old, still here, no sign that my time has come, no signs. Hmm. Oh yes, we've got to support the Green Line right now. Since you're so close to becoming a living legend, Construct hunting stations. Aid hunting trips to the North Setor, which you'll gain 
you'll get 150 prestige for this, and you earn additional prestige annually from the estates. Increases the ch success chances for the hunting trips up there. It improves its resilience by a larger amount. If this support fails to arrive, which it hasn't happened to me yet, its resilience and looks decrease by a random amount between 0 and 10. It improves Greenland Soundworks by a small random amount. The Greenland settlements are remote and small, and sometimes depend on those back in Europe to assist them in their operations, even if the colony is thriving. It doesn't hurt for us to help, especially since Greenland's ivory is an important and valuable commodity traded along the various Atlantic maritime trade routes. I have thus sent ships of supplies and skilled laborers with the intention of constructing several hunting stations in Greenland, built at strategic points along Greenland's western coastline. These structures are critical for providing supplies, shelter, and areas to process hunted animals during the annual war hunt in Nootsatup. May these ships journey safely to Green. If it all goes well, it'll take them a few weeks to arrive at their destination. For future reference. This is what we're going to do next. West of Greenland, our lands potentially could have resources, allies, and other treasures. I wish to recruit some brave adventurers to explore these regions. Though funding an expedition will be expensive and risky. The results of the expedition, which can range from gaining or losing gold, character modifiers, and more, depending on its leader. Destination and choices during the episodes of the expedition. Expeditions can be costed depending on Greenland's resilience and networks, particularly during the subsistence phase. During the next three months, you will gather people and supplies to prepare. You can ask Kota to lead the expedition for your interaction, or have a randomly spawn leader instead. Your choices during this stage may increase the cost of the expedition. Now, some historical context. The Norse presence in Vineland, um, of, or Vinland, was nothing more than a short-lived pit stop, rather than a true colony. But there is evidence of continued Norse trips to Markland and possibly Hilland. Markland served as a source of timber for Greenland as late as the 14th century. While there is disputed theory that the Norse traded regularly with the native peoples of Hilland for centuries. Now, in case you've been wondering what is what in the sense of episodes, each expedition is divided into three episodes that can have positive, neutral, or negative outcomes. Sometimes these outcomes can be influenced by the expedition leader's skills. Regardless, these outcomes determine whether the expedition is considered a success or failure. So I'm about to make my first mistake. Possible mistake. But, but first, let's examine each and one of these destinations. Hilleland. Though desolate, Hilleland is close to green. Higher chances of episodes that increase or decrease Greenland's networks. Higher chances of episodes involving encounters with native locals rather than other options. Markland. Far away Markland is famed for its temper. Higher chances of episodes that decrease or uh, decrease Greenland's resilience. And, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, actually we don't see it anymore because I was wondering Greenland's current status. Or Finland. Finland. Is legendary distance Finland? Is it really worth it? Higher chances of episodes that increase or decrease Finland's viability. Now, what is viability, you may ask? Viability is the global value that represents how appealing setting it. And Vanland is for those involved in the colonization of Greenland. Despite its fame and pop history, the Norse did not stay there for the long term because it was too distant and it would have been a waste of resources better spent on a more profitable Greenland. Thus, it will be a challenge to raise its viability. The main way to raise Vanland's viability while the colonization of Greenland is active is through two decisions. Either by sending expeditions to there, or if my dynasty has an outpost, by supporting if the colonization of Greenland is resolved with a good ending, its viability will increase by random. Small amounts each year until it reaches 50, if it isn't above that yet. 
And of course, we mentioned about these two areas. Hilliland is the name for a region west of Greenland. It likely corresponds to the modern day Baffin Island in Canada. It can be interacted with once a ruler who is involved in the colonization of Greenland takes the decision to explore the seas west of Greenland. The main way to interact with Hilliland is through the expeditions. The advantage of sending expeditions there as opposed to the other two is that you are more likely to trigger expedition episodes where you encountered local native peoples and increase its networks. Historically, Hilliland may have been a site of occasional Norse contact with the local cultures, namely the Dorset and later on the Inuit. Markland was the Norse name for a region west of Greenland and south of Hilliland which likely corresponds to modern day uh, Labrador in Canada. So, the main way to interact with Marcos through expeditions, the advantage of sending expeditions to there as opposed to Hilla and Vinland is that you're more likely to trigger expedition episodes that increase its resilience. Historically, Markland was noted for its many forests, and Greenlanders made voyages there as late as the 14th century to harvest timber. And, of course, there's this one. Which Vinland, 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 whatever. I'll figure out the correct pronunciation when I do a little research after some episode or two. This area over here was the Norse name for a region west of Greenland and south of Markland and Hildeland. It's like the correspondence of modern day Newfoundland and the Gulf of St. Morris and possibly as far south as Maine in the United States. Due to its remoteness and a lack of lucrative resources on Lincoln, Colonizing Vinland is an extremely difficult if the colonization of Greenland has not been resolved to a good ending. Sending expeditions to there is also costly. The main global value related to Vinland is viability, which influences, increase, influences the chances of success when attempting to establish the outpost there. If the Norse colonization of Greenland has a good ending, then rulers in the Nordic Seas region will have access to this region to establish a permanent colony there. Now, if before we actually hit that, you see this, based on that current phase, you have 25% chances of succeeding. Doing that prematurely, waste of money. This would be manageable. And I know we have a tendency to spend a bit of resilience to do these walrus hunts, but... But I know what you people came here for, and what will happen in her lifetime and someone else's. This is going to cost us 205 gold. 55, 105, 205. So, let's explore to there first. Because this is what that episode is mainly about. Because we found those lands west of Greenland. Then let's go far. And try to increase its viability a little. And there's a reason why I said earlier that I might make a mistake. There are lands that lie beyond green, like vine. Uh, I spawn, uh, the reason I pronounce the word vine because wine, that's the word here. Wine lands, get it? By sponsoring the expedition there, we could locate useful resources, locals to trade with, and more if we succeed. As I begin to organize this expedition, I need to carefully consider the question of who will lead it. The per this person needs to be courageous, intelligent, and able. Their leadership could make the difference between the expedition's success or failure. Some of my court have expressed interest in becoming the expedition. Should I grant this honor or give it to some? Should I give this some more thought? Nikolaus, who made a book for me, the veteran explorer, or Thorbranda, or. I just need to think this over on the side, which for the next three months, I will have the access to interaction to request one of my courtiers to be the expedition. Courtiers who express initial interest this whole could still be given an offer, and they will automatically accept. If you do not choose anyone, or if no one accepts your request after the three months are up, a randomly generated character is selected as you. I think I know who, but there's a reason why I said I could be making a mistake. Yeah, too far away. Thorun, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I want you to be the expedition leader. 
We'll accept 100% because of a high opinion towards me. We're friends and we're dynasty. You have the boldness and the energy for it. Though you may not have the honor and the fact that you are lazy, but hopefully you will have an experience of a lifetime. You will go to a land that no man or woman has ever gone to before. And you are a shield maiden. And if you do return, think about the fame and wealth that you would earn before you become the Queen of Norway. So, I shall appoint you as expedition leader. My dear mother, I will gladly accept your offer to appoint me as the leader of the upcoming expedition to the Western Seas. The thought of going on an adventure like this excites me. I am grateful for your trust in my abilities. I promise I will not let you down. Wonderful. She's good. She's, she got a hundred prestige for that. So you'll fear no danger whatever you may encounter over there. See you later. Meanwhile, let's try this again. Got the money pay up. Aid has arrived in Greenland. So there you go. Labor is supplies of Greenland. Works begun and construct several hunting stations along the coastline of Greenland. Once completed, should provide invaluable insisting hunters in any war since next. Okay, there you go. Greenland's resilience uh, just jumped up big time. Well, it's networks up a bit. So that balances it out. Earn a bit of prestige for that, as I'm about to become the living legend. She needs 400 more. Which I think I can get it before my life is over. Yeah. Wish I could duel somebody right now. Yeah, yeah. There's someone I know. Nicholas. Today is the day that the expedition I've organized will set off the night. I've come to the harbor in Nidaros to bid them farewell. The expedition is led other than Thorin, who I personally handpicked to be its leader. Hopefully my favorite abilities will be well placed. Thorin assures me that the crew is in good spirits and I hope they are ready for this great adventure. I can only hope that nothing goes wrong on the trip and that she and her crew return to great success. Whether that is bountiful treasure, trade opportunities with locals, new discoveries or something else. Safe journey stone, so this expedition will last roughly one to two years. Well, during which we'll go through three episodes. These episodes can have positive, negative, or neutral outcomes that determines it that determines whether the expedition is considered success or failure. Sometimes outcomes can be influenced by the expedition leader's skills. So now she's gained the trait of uh adventuring the western seas. Cannot have children, may not marry at the moment. For real this time. I just noticed that, um... So it was you that subjugated the Sami. Then perhaps we should pay more attention to Swedish affairs. But that'll be up to Thorin whenever she returns. A box, you say? Of 
course. Here we go again. All I have the most powerful voters to have the votes forced. A messenger bird brings me a message from Thorin with an update about her expedition to Vendor. They were sailing along the coastline of an unknown land when, to their surprise, they found a shipwreck by the shore. To further their surprise, a number of Norse sailors were there too. According to the ship's captain, Ignofer, they were the crew of a trading ship that was sailing to and from Greenland, but they were blown off course. With their supplies dwindling, they were worried they would never meet any friendly faces or see their homelands again. Anyway, some of the cargo these sailors were transported managed to survive the wreck, and thus helped Thorin to salvage whatever is left before joining her crew. Happy ending for once. So, that was the first one. So we got one good outcome here. So currently this expedition has one good and zero bad episodes, including this one. If the expedition has more good than bad episodes, or at least an equal amount, then it will be considered a success. Due to this episode's outcome, you might receive one or more of the following the expedition returns on. Extra gold, prestige, piety, and any increase to its viability here. Just to keep everybody happy here. My friend Aslog stops in all the so. Ah, there you are, Strider. Spoke to Morganwald. I heard he's making a box for you. Couldn't resist a visit to his workshop. I talked to him about it. Meet your and I think you will like the results. Slightly lower quality. It's not what I wanted to hear. A messenger bird brings you a message from Thorin with an update about her expedition to Valmont. According to the message, the expedition is going well. Thorin says the crew has just encountered a large number of seals, which they successfully hunted. Among the peoples of the north, seals are commonly used for meat and oil, and this has raised the morale of the crew greatly. I'm glad to hear it. That's a good outcome here. So, to this episode coming, so it might be extra gold, prestige, beneficial character modifiers, or increase the viability of your door. So that means it'll be a definite success then. Whenever she returns from the expedition, we will end the episode. I'm actually going to cut it short. Still waiting word. Yeah, yeah, whatever you need. Will be of higher quality. Better damn well be.
we're waiting for the next episode of that expedition to over there. And at the same time, about to become the legend. Seals again. So they encountered more seals. Glad to hear it. So now it's a guaranteed success. She'll be returning soon. And of course, do not forget, development level will reach in a couple of months. Hey, stop the schemes. There might be someone to murder me. You may never know. I got many enemies. Why aren't you dead yet? I'd love to come over there and beat you again. Oh, sending me a gift. Thank you very much. How generous of you. Like if I need it. My spies for me about a hunter causing a ruckus at the local tavern. The man is spending large amounts of gold and bragging loudly about a great deal he struck with a fancy lady in pearls and silk. Apparently drew a map of the local plains for an unknown noble one. The spies think that the lady must be scheming against me or one of my subjects. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Return. The ships we sent on an expedition to the island has returned. I went to meet Thorun and asked her about the various adventures she had during the expedition. Unsurprisingly, there was much to tell. Fortunately, it appears the expedition was ultimately a success. During the expedition, Thorin managed to acquire a lot of useful resources, contacts, and information while exploring this frontier region. There is no doubt that the bones of this exodus will greatly help the Greenland colony. Perhaps we could send another expedition to this region in the future. It would be another great opportunity to earn more glory for ourselves. Truly a wonderful result. So, Thorun is now a veteran explorer. She's gained prestige for this. I gained prestige and more along with the pirate. And uh, activate a scent. Successful expedition to uh, Catalyst. Now I am the living legend because of this. And Thorin. Oh, and she's a Viking too. That further adds up to the martial and prowess skill. Now she's an explorer too, because when she rules Norway, there's many benefits. Her learning goes up a bit, so is her prowess. Diplomacy of low per fame will be up, and so is prestige. More importantly, a little more of the diplomatic range and naval speed, so that way we can get in and out faster uh, when raiding the coasts. And also have a little more of the learn language scheme power, because she doesn't know any languages other than Norse. The level of fame is established, but in no time she'll become distinguished. Again, despite her flaws, there is much more room for improvement for her. Too bad he didn't find any artifacts while over there. And it seems it did not increase its viability over there. Nope, chances are still the same. And you can't support it because there is no colony there. I mean, excuse me, no colony nor outpost. <laughs> and with that, we'll end the episode on that note. Because in the next episode, um... What the hell is... Weren't they once part of... They actually let him go? 
Oh, no, no, same dynasty. It's just a complicated matter. Right, the realms are split. So, in the next episode, this will definitely be Astrid's last episode. <laughs> because her health's doing poor, but at least she has lived long enough to say that. We've explored the seas west of Greenland, and we went to this isolated place uh, with Thorin, now the explorer. And we won't be able to do that again until... Until 10 years, basically. So we should keep sending expeditions back and forth over there. So possibly in a few centuries we'll attempt to build an outpost then. Unless someone else do does that and beats us to it. So there's a lot more work to be done for the, for the next episode. But until then, so long for now.